Welcome to the Maricopa County Air Quality Department Annual Missions Inventory Report Training. This is the first of six training videos that provides an introduction to the process and need to know items. The Annual Emissions Inventory Report lists a facility's processes, details, and associated emissions. The Inventory Report is a requirement of your air quality permit, and a separate report is required for each business location with its own air quality permit. A common question is, why does the Maricopa County Air Quality Department require this report? It is required by the Clean Air Act for state implementation plans. We use report information for tracking purposes for national ambient air quality standards attainment, as well as determining compliance with regulations. The report is also used to identify sources, emission levels, patterns, and trends to develop control strategies and new regulations. In addition, emission profiles are used to inform the Emissions Reduction Credit Program when emissions are reduced and have the potential to be exchanged for monetary compensation. So what are the pollutants that need to be reported? The report must include emissions from your facility of carbon monoxide, or CO, nitrogen oxides, or NOx, particulate matter 10 microns or less, or PM10, sulfur oxides, or SOx, volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, ammonia, or NHx, lead, and hazardous air pollutants, or HAPS and NON. HAPS and NON are materials that are hazardous air pollutants and not also a VOC. These should be reported on your inventory report if your site is subject to a federal maximum achievable control technology standard or your air quality permit has specific limits for HAPS and NON emissions. Common HAPS and NON emissions include methylene chloride, perchloroethylene, 111 trichloroethane, hydrochloric acid, and hydrofluoric acid. Hazardous air pollutants that are also volatile organic compounds are reported as VOCs. There are different methods that can be used to calculate emissions, and you must use the most accurate method available for your facility. The following hierarchy of preferred methods describes the order of preference for emission calculation methods. The first preferred emissions calculation method is the use of certified continuous emissions monitors. This method directly measures what is coming out of the emission source. The second preferred method in the hierarchy is emissions calculations from the source performance test conducted in accordance with Maricopa County Rule 270. It is important to use the most recent test for this approach. The third method that is preferred in the methods hierarchy, if method one and two are unavailable, is material balance that is determined from engineering knowledge of the process. The idea is what goes into the process in terms of material throughput is what comes out in the form of emissions, for example, all sulfur and diesel fuel is converted to SOx. If the first three preferred methods in the hierarchy are unavailable, then you should use the emission factors published by the EPA in publication number AP-42 Compilation of Air Pollutant Emission Factors, Volume 1, Stationary Point and Area Sources. Finally, if all other emission calculation methods in the hierarchy are not available, you should choose to use an alternative source for calculating emissions, and you must provide backup documentation to verify your approach, for example, engineering calculations based on knowledge of the emissions process. Once you have acquired emission calculation factors, Review the reporting forms. Facilities that have reported before should come with pre-printed information on the forms. Some current year information may differ from what was submitted in a prior year. Please review and verify all pre-printed information, correcting any errors as needed. This includes adding new processes, removed equipment, as well as new contact information. If you report using homemade electronic versions of our forms, they must conform to the current information requirements and formats that are supplied on our preprinted forms. Reporting forms that vary significantly from the form provided will not be accepted. 
data on emission reports is publicly available unless confidentiality is requested and request requirements are met. To request emissions data be held confidential, the specific data elements deemed confidential must have the corresponding shaded confidentiality boxes marked with an X on relevant forms. Only certain data categories on the forms indicated by the gray shaded boxes on the reporting forms can be requested to be confidential. You must provide a written explanation on company letterhead describing why release of this emissions information could cause substantial harm to your business's competitive position, i.e. trade secret. Please do not stamp any pages confidential, highlight data, or otherwise mark pages. Consequences of such unapproved confidentiality marks on the pages may result in your report being considered incomplete and late. Emission sources that should not be reported include welding, soil remediation activities, fuel use for vehicles, acetone use, emissions from fuels or organic chemicals in any storage tank with a capacity less than 250 gallons, storage emissions of diesel and jet A fuel in underground tanks of any size or above ground tanks with a throughput of less than 4 million gallons per year, routine pesticide usage, housekeeping cleaners, and routine maintenance painting at your facility. Additional emissions that should not be reported are materials with usage of less than 15 gallons or 100 pounds per year. Note that all similar equipment and materials must be grouped together before applying these limitations. Unique IDs are required for stacks, control devices, off-site recycling, and processes. A process ID number may only be used once on a general process form or for a material on an evaporative process form. The same ID number cannot be used across these two forms. Stack, control device, and off-site recycling form unique ID numbers cannot be duplicated within each form category, but can be the same across these three form types. New emission sources must be assigned a new unique ID by the individual filling out the emissions inventory report. Existing processes previously assigned an ID number must use the same ID number going forward. Delete and strike out processes that no longer exist, but do not use that ID number again as it has already been assigned to a retired emission source. Make a copy of your completed emissions inventory report. Keep a copy of all forms submitted and all records and calculations used to complete your report. Regulations require that all documentation is kept at the location where pollution is emitted for at least five years. Have the data certification form signed by a company representative. Include your air quality permit number on all correspondence submitted with your report. Return the original signed copy of your annual emissions report to Maricopa County Air Quality Department. Attention Emissions Inventory Unit, 3800 North Central Avenue, Suite 1400, Phoenix, Arizona, 85012. Industry and process-specific help sheets are available at the following website, maricopa.gov forward slash 2648. These include help sheets for bakeries, natural gas boilers or heaters, concrete batch plants, printing plants, woodworking, and sand and gravel plants to name a few. Thank you for viewing this emissions inventory report introductory training video number one and be sure to view the next training video number two in the sequence covering the business form. If you have any remaining questions please call 602-506 6790 or email at emissions inventory at maricopa.gov. General information and resources for the emissions inventory report can be found at maricopa.gov forward slash 2628. Additional information can be found through the internet links listed below this video on the YouTube webpage. Thank you for your participation.